So maybe you're looking to get into PC gaming for the first time, but just don't quite know where to start. Well, Overclockers UK may have just the thing for you with their new range of Spectra gaming PCs. Our model boasts an Intel i9-12900KF, an RCX 3080 and 32 gigabytes of RAM, but is it worth the £2,500 asking price? That's what we're going to find out in this video. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we are checking out a new pre-built system from Overclockers UK. Known as the Indigo, this is part of their new Spectra gaming range which offers a variety of pre-built PCs that can ship out next day. So the Spectra range as a whole is designed for those who are looking to get into PC gaming or those who just want a solid gaming PC without diving into the nitty gritty and specking out an entire system themselves. Instead, Overclockers UK is focusing on the core spec of the CPU and the GPU, offering different combinations to suit different price points and performance levels. There's even a very quick quiz you can do on their website, which asks you what games you want to play, at what resolution, and at the end, it recommends one of their new pre-built systems, depending on the spec you need. The range starts at the low end with the Crimson system costing less than £600 and it goes all the way up to the top of the line Indigo model which we have here which is priced at £2,500. This sports an Intel i9-12900KF, an RTX 3080 with 32GB of DDR4 memory alongside a 1TB NVMe SSD. Getting into the design and build of the Indigo then, we're going to start with the case, which here is the Fantex P500A, where the A stands for airflow, and of course we have it in matte black. Being the airflow variant of this case means we have a completely mesh front panel, and that allows a ton of cool air to be drawn in. OC UK has actually put the radiator at the front of the system here, with three RGB fans intaking and pushing air through the radiator. The liquid cooler itself is the EK AIO DRGB with a smart looking RGB CPU block and braided tubing. However, this does bring me on to one of the key points of the Spectra range. So if we look at the spec sheet on the Indigo webpage, we can see it is actually deliberately vague with no mention of specific models or manufacturers. The AIO for instance is just called a 360mm all-in-one while the SSD is just listed as M.2 1TB SSD. Of course, we did ask OCUK about this and they told us it has been done deliberately in order to try and take the focus away from all the individual models and SKUs out there and instead keep the focus on the core spec. So if you're not really sure which of the many hundreds of NVMe SSDs would be best or which liquid cooler you want for instance, then this is just a way of keeping things simple. It does however mean that the spec isn't configurable on the OCUK website, so what you see is what you get. Overclockers also told us that this strategy allows them to easily swap out different components that may go end of life or that simply go out of stock without having to create a new listing for the PC every single time. Now, you may be concerned about this hearing, wondering, well, what happens if this liquid cooler goes out of stock, but I particularly wanted that model? Well, don't worry, because Overclockers UK told us that they will always try and go for as close to a like-for-like -like replacement as possible. So, in the case of our Indigo model here, if you like the look of the EK AIO, don't worry, they're not going to swap it out for a bog standard OEM cooler if it does go out of stock. Instead, Overclockers told us that they're always going to focus on getting the overall performance, size and aesthetic as close as possible. Just before moving on to the rest of the spec then, we already mentioned the three radiator fans intaking at the front of the chassis, while we have to mention one 140mm fan in the roof and another in the rear of the case, which are both set as exhausts. As for the motherboard then, OC UK has gone for the Asus Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi D4. This has proven to be a solid Z690 board in my testing, it's not given me any cause for complaint, and as we will see later, 
it runs the 12900KF at 4.9 GHz without drawing a ton of power. The D4 part of the name as well is also important as it means the motherboard uses DDR4 memory instead of DDR5, which I personally think is a smart choice as DDR5 is still more expensive than DDR4 and I'm not really sure that the type of person buying a PC like this would really be able to benefit from D5 memory. The memory in question is offered in two 16GB sticks of Team Group T-Force Vulcan Z modules. This kit is rated for 3200 MHz, which is fine, but the timings are quite loose at 1620 2040, which is a bit disappointing to see as there are other kits around the same price point with tighter timings. Moving on to storage though, the only drive in the system is a 1TB NVMe SSD installed underneath the motherboard's heatsink. Taking off that heatsink reveals the drive in question is the WD-SN850, which is a very fast NVMe drive we have reviewed in the past. I do have to say though that only a single one terabyte drive in a PC that costs this much, I don't think is that great. SATA SSDs for instance are pretty cheap these days, so it would have been good to see Overclockers UK throw in another one or even a two terabyte 2.5 inch drive just to give you that bit of extra storage space. And then for the graphics card, do remember of course that the specific model can vary, but in my sample we have the Asus Tough Gaming RTX 3080 OC edition. I have reviewed this one myself and it is a quality model, and the RTX 3080 is still a very fast GPU for 2022. I did notice a bit of GPU sag though, it's nothing terrible but it does droop slightly towards the end so maybe Overclockers UK could have installed a bracket there but it's not awful. And then we come on to the power supply which is another area for discussion. So looking at the spec sheet we can see OC UK says an 850 watt 80 plus bronze unit will be used and for me that is just not good enough in a system like this. Now, I'm not saying it won't work or that it will necessarily cause you issues. I just think it looks pretty bad. For a system that costs two and a half grand, I really think 80 plus gold is the bare minimum here. And the power supply really isn't an area you want to cheap out on, especially considering the level of hardware in this PC. The specific model we have is the Seasonic B12. And a quick search on the OC UK website shows it's actually discounted to £65 at the time of filming. There is, however, a Seasonic G12, which is 80 plus gold, and that is on offer at £80, so it's hardly any more expensive. So for me, that is a misstep from OC UK. Just to be clear though, I didn't have any issues during my testing of the Indigo, and you do still get the standard three year collect and return warranty. But even then, considering the price point of this system, I really would expect a lot more. That is also my thinking when it comes to looking at the cable management. It's certainly not the worst I've ever seen, but it doesn't look like OC UK went to great effort to keep everything as tidy as possible. The CPU power cables, for instance, haven't even been tied down and are just hanging loose. It could well be that you're not particularly fussed about this, everything works, everything's plugged in correctly, but for me, it's just not showing a huge amount of care, which personally, I would find a bit disappointing if I just spent two and a half grand on a gaming PC. Leaving that behind us though, it's time to move on to performance and we'll start by confirming the clock speeds of the i9-12900KF. Starting with a sustained Cinebench R23 multi-core load, we can see that 4.9 GHz is held on the P cores and we see 3.7 GHz on the E cores with CPU package power at 200 watts, which is pretty decent for a Z690 board. While gaming, using Cyberpunk at 1440p for an example, the CPU can again hold those same speeds expected, but this time with CPU package power just below 100 watts, so everything is fine and as expected. It's also worth saying that for the rest of our benchmarks, 
I'm going to be reusing my test data for my recent Corsair 1 review. So that means we're comparing it to the Corsair 1 as well as the KitGuru test system, which are both equipped with an i9 12900K and RTX 3080 Ti. So the overall spec is similar. However, I do want to make clear that as the Indigo has a 3080, whereas the other two systems have a 3080 Ti, we are expecting it to be slower in gaming workloads. So if you do see it at the bottom of every gaming result, that is to be expected. It's not a bad reflection on the Indigo, but I still think including these two other systems just gives us a good point of comparison. Starting off with Blender then, we can see very similar performance to the KitGuru test system, only dropping back by less than one sample per minute, while the Indigo is faster than the Corsair 1 here due to its higher sustained clock speed. It's the same thing in Citibench R23 as well, with the multi-core score being almost identical to the KitGuru test system, while it's still a couple thousand points ahead of the Corsair 1. There's no meaningful difference to the single core scores, however, as all three CPUs had the same single core clock speed. As for the 3 d Mark times by CPU score, however, here we can see the Indigo does drop off a fair bit by about 2000 points. We can, however, put this down to the use of DDR4 memory here instead of DDR5, which is in the other two systems. And that is something that this test can be sensitive to. The time spy GPU score though is entirely as expected, with the RTX 3080 coming in 10% slower than the 3080 Ti Founders Edition, which is what we used in the KitGuru test system. Back to the memory though, the A64 results really show the difference between DDR4 and DDR5, though it has to be said the real world effects of the reduced bandwidth are much smaller. Take PC Mark 10 for instance, where there is honestly very little difference between all three systems tested. The Indigo does fall a little bit short of the KitGuru test system when we're looking at the content creation benchmark, but it has to be said, the overall scores are very close across the board. Now, as for gaming, here we're going to be testing 10 different titles at 1440p and 4K using the maximum image quality presets. As expected, the RTX 3080 in the Indigo does make it a touch slower than the other two systems we are comparing to, as they both have RTX 3080 Ti's, but even then, the differences are not that big. Typically, we can see the Indigo coming in between 8-12% to slower than the KitGuru test system, but that still makes it a great PC for high refresh rate 1440p gaming, and 4K is no problem too. You might not get a locked 60 FPS at 4K, as shown by the likes of Cyberpunk 2077 or Dying Light 2, but in plenty of other titles, the frame rate is right up there. In fact, averaged over the 10 games we tested, we see a 4K frame rate of 85 FPS, and that's only 11% slower than the KitGuru test system with the RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. Moving on then to thermals, and we're going to start with the CPU, where we see excellent results across the board. The fact that the motherboard can hit 4.9 GHz at only 200 watts, of course coupled with the 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler, definitely keeps CPU thermals very healthy indeed, staying below 60 degrees while gaming. The GPU also does very well, hitting a hotspot of 78 degrees during a 30 minute stress test in Cyberpunk. The 84 degree reading for the GDDR6X memory is also impressive and is significantly lower than what we can see from the 3080 Ti Founders Edition as well as the custom cooling setup of the Corsair 1. It does have to be said that these thermal results did come at the slight cost of higher noise levels with the system hitting 43 decibels when gaming when measured from 30 centimeters away. It's hardly loud and it would easily be drowned out by a decent set of speakers or a gaming headset. However, we do have to say we have tested quieter machines in the past. As for power draw though, here we can see very similar results to the KitGuru test system when looking at the gaming power draw, with about 550 watts being stuck down at the wall. During a CPU intensive workload though, like Cinebench, the total system power draw is significantly lower 
than the Kit Guru test system as a result of this Asus motherboard being much less aggressive with the CPU power delivery for the OCUK Indigo. Bringing all of this together then, as pre-built gaming PCs go, we have to say the OCUK Spectra Gaming Indigo is certainly decent. We've had no fundamental issues with it, the overall specification is pretty well balanced, and I'd also say it's been built to a fairly good standard. The key thing to remember about the Indigo is that it really has been designed for the kind of person who doesn't keep up with the latest in PC hardware, who would probably feel a little bit uncomfortable if they had to spec out an entire system on their own, and who certainly would not want to build it themselves. In other words, the target market for this system is almost the complete opposite to the average Kit Guru viewer, who would really want fine control over every single component that goes in their systems, and who more than likely wouldn't buy a pre-built in the first place. So, I do think that is just worth bearing in mind when coming to assess this system. That being said, I do still think that there is room for improvement for overclockers to improve the Indigo, and that has to start with the power supply. In 2022, an 80 plus bronze unit in a system that costs this much with an i9 and RTX 3080 is just not good enough and it really needs to be 80 plus gold at the minimum. Additionally, only a single one terabyte drive in this PC is just not enough. After I installed 10 games, I was only left with 40 gigabytes of free space, so there really needs to be a second drive, which ideally would be another one or two terabytes. The final thing I'd say as well is that cable management definitely leaves a fair bit to be desired. It does work, but to me, it just doesn't show a huge amount of care in the appearance of the system. Like I said though, I don't think any of those are fundamental issues, though the PSU would be the first thing I'd change. But for who the Indigo is targeted at, I really do think a prospective consumer would be very happy with the level of gaming performance on offer. After all, the combination of the i9, RTX 3080 and 32GB of DDR4 memory really is very potent for 1440p or 4K gaming. The only other thing I want to finish with though is that OCUK is definitely charging a fair bit of a premium for doing all this work for you. I actually priced up a near identical spec on PC Part Picker and came to a total price of just over £2,150. So that's about £350 lower than the Indigo's asking price. Of course, we do have to factor in the warranty into that, as well as the fact that OCUK is building and shipping the system out. But even then, I do just think OCUK is fully aware of who their target market is and is probably not the kind of person who stays fully up to date with all the latest street pricing for PC DIY hardware. So I do think OCUK is pushing their luck a bit there, but if you do want something that's going to take all of the hassle out, then I do think the Spectra Gaming Indigo is worth considering. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. You can also come chat with us on our Discord server, which is linked in the description below, and while you're there, why not check out our merch store, and if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. The links for that are in the description. That is it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic Fortkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.